Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Forbes sports money reporter, Matt Craig. Matt, thanks for coming on. Thank you, as always, for having me. Of course, you wrote about the Swiss running shoe brand on this week. And at the U.S. Open, though, the company was involved in what you could describe as a misstep. Tell us about it. Well, of course. Uh, I mean, on running shoes, you know, they've gone from a startup company to a $10 billion public company in just a little over 10 years. So we're talking about a, a very, very successful brand. But they've always done one thing extremely well, and that's make shoes that people love to run in. Um, diving into another sport category is tough, uh, especially in the case of tennis. That shoe requires something very different than a running shoe. Um, just if you think about the pattern of movement. A running shoe is just very straight line, um, move straight ahead. Tennis is 360 degrees. Um, so the requirements of a tennis shoe are very different and on learned that. Uh, whenever they brought on Roger Federer as an investor in 2019 and tried to make a tennis shoe, they realized it was going to be a lot harder than, than they thought. So um, in their particular case, uh, they made a shoe with Roger Federer. It was the perfect shoe for him, everything to his specifications. And then when Roger Federer retired, they went out and signed two new professional tennis players, both of who are promising, but both of whom move very differently than Roger Federer. Um, so I think what you're referring to is with Iga Sviantek, the number one women's tennis player in the world. She signed a multi-million dollar deal with On to wear all their products. And yet more than six months after signing that contract, she's still not wearing the On tennis shoes to play her matches in. Um, and you know, for, for a company that's invested heavily in her, I know that's a little bit of a disappointment. How detrimental is this for a brand to have an ambassador of her stature in the sport come out in a competing brand? Well, it I guess it just depends on how long this goes. Um, I think right now it's not that detrimental um, because you know it's such a new tennis product and this deal is still six months old. Um, in the case of Federer, for example, he signed on as an investor in 2019, and he didn't debut his original on Roger Pro shoe until 2021. So that was two years. Um, if we're looking up in two years and Igish Fiontech still not comfortable wearing the on tennis shoe, that would be detrimental. Um, that would certainly be a problem. Uh, right now, it's not. So it's really just about I, what I personally think is, you know, this is the last major of the year. They'll have a little bit of extra time here in the winter, and hopefully, um, by next year's Australian Open, you know, she's in an on shoe. And, and that's when um, I think, you know, I, I think people will forgive. People will forgive. Uh, but uh, I guess it just depends on how long it goes on. You characterize on in your report as a scrappy startup, and now the brand is at a $10 billion public company. So can you walk us through its really meteoric rise? Sure. So, you know, it's three guys um, in Switzerland and they have an idea uh, for a running shoe. They come out with it in 2011, uh, or I guess the first shoe doesn't come out until 2012. And really by the next year, uh, a gold medalist at the 2012 um, Olympics is a Swiss athlete uh, is running in that shoe. And that what talk about an endorsement. I mean, if you think about what we just said about Igor Sviantek, um, this was a, a brand new brand at that point. Uh, and they got the endorsement of a, a Swiss Olympian. So um, from there, you know, they grew as a private company, then they IPO'd in 2021 and, and have really only grown since then. I mean, six straight quarters of uh, record breaking revenue for them. They're growing on a 40% clip. I mean, I think last quarter was like a 60% growth in, in sales. So they're growing like crazy. I think we're, we've seen a trend um, across the industry for brands like this. Lululemon has, has grown tremendously in recent years. Um, the Deckers brand, which uh, is overseeing the Hoka running shoes, also is growing like crazy. So um, brands like this are doing very well. Um, but with the, in the case of On, they have the ambitions of becoming, you know, like a Nike, like an Adidas, uh, a, a cross-sport um, sportswear brand. And that's where I think this tennis experiment needs to work for them. Let's talk about that a little more because I've seen on people, you know, running errands in those shoes, people running recreationally in those shoes. But why do they see this opportunity to make a tennis shoe? Yeah, for sure. So 
you know, they their ethos has always been performance first from the very start. It was we're going to make the very best running shoe possible. And initially, when they're a private company, especially, um, they were selling directly to, you know, avid avid runners, either professional runners or you know people who are running 100 miles a week uh, for fun. Um, some people think that's fun, Brittany. I don't, I don't know, not me. Um, I'm running a marathon, case, um, so I I, I kind of think it's fun. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Um, so where their sales really took off and where they really, really grew as a company is when these elite performance running shoes started being adopted by people um, to do everyday things. Uh, and that, that was kind of like a trend that they didn't, I guess they weren't the only ones responsible for it. It was kind of happening anyways, but they were certainly a big part of it. Uh, and one of the sources I talked to for this story was like, yeah, I went to Disneyland and everyone at Disneyland is wearing on running shoes, you know? None of these people are, are running marathons, but um, everyone's wearing on. So that's really how the company, in my opinion, went to the next level. And they saw a similar opportunity in tennis. I mean, I mean if you think about, um, I think of like the Stan Smith Adidas shoes or Reebok has, you know, Club C shoes. Those used to be tennis shoes that are now just worn for lifestyle. Um, really the Lacoste brand, that's the entire story of their company, right? They were founded by a legendary tennis player. And now, you know, they have some tennis stuff, but really realistically, that's just a lifestyle company. So um, the on folks saw that tennis had the same opportunity for elite performance, carrying over into lifestyle, carrying over into the much bigger market. Um, and I think that's why they, they went after tennis. That plus, once they signed up Roger Federer, the greatest or one of the greatest tennis players of all time, that certainly gives them uh, another leg into the uh, into the industry. So, Federer's wearing the shoe as of now. Sviantec is not. What are people in the industry saying? Is this a good tennis shoe as of now? Well, I, I can speak for you know. I, I play some tennis out here, and me and my friends talk about gear and equipment all the time. And and some of the people I've tried the shoe don't really love it. Um, but I found it very interesting that, you know, I talked to this one expert, this guy who's a, a foot doctor who was also an avid tennis player. And he was saying that the reasons why it was such a perfect shoe for Roger Federer are probably the reasons why uh, we, you know, average recreational players don't love it. And maybe why Sviantec doesn't love it too, because anyone who remembers watching Roger, Roger Federer play knows that he just kind of gracefully just glided across the court. I mean, it was almost like he, you know, he was never sweating. He certainly was never sliding. He just kind of like, you know, appeared wherever the ball was. Uh, that's not how we, you know, play recreationally. Um, and even in the case of Shvantec, who's a great mover, she slides into every single shot. Um, so that, again, is a requires a very different kind of shoe than what Roger Federer used. So, in and this and on admits this, they made that shoe specifically for Roger Federer for him to make, and then they just decided to put it out because it's a signature shoe and Roger Federer's a big name. And they certainly weren't expecting him um, to deal with the health issues and retire in 2022. Thought maybe he had a few more years. So um, this particular shoe, I think it, it works very well uh, for a certain kind of player, you know, who's not someone that's sliding around a lot. Um, and it also works very well for someone who has many pairs uh, to replace it because it wears out very quickly. I, I know that both anecdotally from people I know and then also, um, again, the expert I talked to said that that you wear the shoe three, four times, and it really, really wears down. It has a very flat tread, so most of the shoe is touching the ground at all times, uh, which means it gives you great, you know, great grip and great feel on the court, but after three uses, if it's worn out and uh, you don't have an infinite supply of shoes like Roger Federer has, you know, that $200 pair of shoes uh, you know, may not be worth it for, for casual players. You mentioned earlier in the conversation that On really wants to be a powerhouse brand. Can you talk a little bit about what On's revenue is looking like? Do you think it has the potential to reach those brands like Nike and Adidas? Well, it's it, it's much smaller than those brands now. I mean, you know, that's certainly the ambition. But if you think about this is On's first move into a different category. If you think about like Nike, you know, there's Nike products for every sport under the sun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, this company is just did their first billion dollar year in sales last year. This year, they raised their guidance uh, for $2 billion in sales. Great. Nike, $47 billion in revenue. So we're, st we're still talking about a small company. They're still growing at, at the rate that you might expect for a successful small company. Um, they still have a, a ways to go, for sure. Even Adidas, I think, is, is around $24 billion. 
in revenue. Um, but what I think is exciting is that, you know, if they have such a positive brand image, people think very highly of on, you know, and if they're able to carry that over into a new sport, tennis, and have that, you know, excellence where they're associated with, you know, the players that they, they sign up and then also just having a great product that everyone loves. Um, and they do it successfully once, who's to say they can't go into a different sport and do it again and do it again uh, and grow to that level. I, I just think that at this point in their history, again, they're only 10 year old or 12 year old company. Um, they, have, they still have a ways to go for sure. Let's talk about that brand image a little bit more. They signed on two superstar ambassadors. We already talked about Tech a little bit, but can you talk about Ben Shelton? Yeah, so one thing that I, I wish I'd been able to get into the story is uh, the on CEO saying that when he sees Ben Shelton, he thinks of a basketball player playing tennis, which I actually think is kind of like the perfect uh, description of him for anyone that's seen him play. He's, he's like six foot four. He's really like muscly for a tennis player. Um, and he wears sleeveless shirts. And, uh, you know, he's, he's very uh, aggressive player, huge serve. He loves to like get the crowd fired up. He's a little bit of a showman. Um, and the other thing, you know, with, with him and Fiontech is like, they seem like, you know, great. Yeah, I guess I can say kids cause they're 20 and 22 years old. You know, they have their heads on straight. I, I don't think either one of them is in any, you know, uh, trouble um, ever. So I think it, they're perfect ambassadors for the brands. Not only that, but they're, you know, they're young and they're successful. Fiontech's won four majors. Ben Shelton has been a pro for like less than a year and has gone from unranked to top 40 in the world. Um, so they signed up, you know, awesome, awesome um, ambassadors. Now they got to hope that, the, that those players pan out into, you know, uh, legends of the sport like Roger Federer, ideally. Um, I do think that they will look to sign additional players. I, I think they kind of like hinted that at me without saying it officially. And um, they're not going to sign up, you know, a hundred players. Like I think, you know, Nike and Adidas have I don't know if 100, but several dozen players on tour. Um, on will try to be selective. You know, that's something that I think sets them apart. But I think they'll sign on uh, others. But I think they, they definitely had a great start signing up uh, Ben Shelton and Shviontek. Two fan favorites. In the case of Shelton, especially social media star, you know, really likable, always smiling. Um, I think, you know, and he's been a walking billboard for them ever since he signed that deal with them. He's wearing their products. He's talking them up all the time. So. So far, so good on that end. Let's talk about On's future a bit. You've noted that their goal is to blur the lines between sports and lifestyle. How exactly is it going to do that? Sure. So, um, again, they hope for just an adoption, um, much like the running shoes, uh, where you know people decide to wear their tennis shoes around each day. Um, I think that like. I don't know. I don't know that I would have said that it was realistic that a running shoe would do that five, 10 years ago. So maybe it is, but I think it's unrealistic that people would wear, you know, the performance tennis shoe um, in their daily life. But one thing that they did do with Roger Federer is they came out with a kind of like hybrid um, tennis lifestyle shoe. I would even call it just more of a lifestyle shoe that looks like their tennis shoe um, called like the Roger clubhouse. And uh, that shoe, you know, if, if, it becomes popular. That's the kind of shoe that can sell more than a performance top of the line tennis shoe. Um, next year in early 2024, 20, spring of 2024, they're going to start releasing tennis apparel. Uh, that could do really well, I think, not only for tennis players, but anyone who likes to work out, anyone who likes the on running shoes. Um, I think they're counting on tennis to beef up their apparel um, across all categories and those sales. Uh, but ultimately, you know, there is kind of a um, tennis aesthetic, I'll call it, you know, that I think aligns with the types of people who already like, you know, $200 pairs of running shoes. Uh, and I think that, um, I think that the on brand um, can successfully uh, market to the same audience, you know, for, for additional products this way. Because I, I guess just, just to say, like, you need one new pair of running shoes every, I don't know, you're running a marathon, you tell me, but you know, every six months, a year, maybe a year and a half, um, whereas, you know, if you have additional products that you can sell to the same customer, that, that seems like good business to me. We're talking new apparel, potential new ambassadors. Is there anything else that is in On's future that you would like to know? 
I, I think right now they want to get back to their original ethos of performance first. So I think the, the next thing you're going to see is this kind of like shoe for the everyday player called the Roger Clubhouse Pro, which I told you the Roger Clubhouse was a lifestyle shoe. The Roger Pro is the uh, performance shoe. So they're kind of going for, you know, uh, a halfway in between sort of thing next to appeal to, again, you know, the, the, the more casual recreational players um, who still want to play tennis in the shoe. Uh, so I think that's like kind of a nice bridge. And then next year they'll have the Roger Pro 2, uh, which they say is what Ben Shelton's wearing. I think what Ben Shelton's wearing during this U.S. Open is something a little bit more custom. But um, I think that, that that's what's coming next for, for them is they want to get back to performance first um, image, I guess, or, or philosophy. And then from there, they can build out the lifestyle stuff, like I said, with the apparel. Uh, but I think we will know if Iga Svantec shows up to the Australian Open in January and she's wearing on shoes. Uh, I think that that will, be, that will be a huge signifier for the company. Well, we will definitely keep our eye out. Matt Craig, thanks for your reporting. Thank you, Brittany.